Day on Rappler. Talks between the government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front stall over disagreements about wealth and power sharing. Nancy Binay and four other senatorial candidates earned from poll donations. And Facebook, Microsoft, and Apple release information about U.S. government requests for data. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Talks between the government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, or MILF, deadlocks. Eight months after the signing of the framework agreement on the Bank Samoro, the two parties disagree about wealth and power sharing, particularly issues on the devolution of taxes, share in natural resources, and how the national government will allot money to the region. The MILF wants to stick to the initial annex both sides finished drafting in February 2013. But when it reached the president, the government proposed changes the MILF thinks went beyond a cursory review. MILF Peace Panel Chair Mohagir Iqbal says, our understanding was since the negotiations had already reached a very high level, the initial annex was already good, but then all of a sudden they presented changes. On Sunday, Presidential Deputy Spokesperson Abigail Valtes Sorry, says the I government knew, uh, is studying the proposal to avoid to mistakes from the past. The delay has long-term implications. Based on the MILF's estimates, the Transition Commission needs up to two years to finish drafting the Bangsamoro Basic Law, the foundation of the Bangsamoro region. By that time, lawmakers will only have a year to pass the law in the 16th Congress before President Benigno Aquino steps down in June 2016. Iqbal adds, the leadership is angry, not only frustrated, but angry. The campaign spending reports of 15 senatorial candidates in the May poll show five got more donations than they were able to spend. Based on the one-page summaries of the candidate's statement of election contributions and expenses, two candidates from the opposition United Nationalist Alliance, UNA, two from Team Pinoy, and one independent candidate have leftover campaign contributions. The biggest earner is vice presidential daughter Nancy Binay. She got campaign contributions totaling 136.87 million pesos and spent only 128.7 million, saving a little over 8 million pesos. Independent Independent candidate Ramon Montano reports the next highest campaign savings. He received 6.63 million in contributions and spent only 1.38 million pesos with 5.25 million in unused funds. Team Pinoy's Bam Aquino reports getting 125.5 million pesos in donations and spending only 124.33 million. He holds an extra 1.17 million pesos from the campaign. Una's Jack Enrida received 150 50.8 million pesos in contributions and spent 150.4 million, saving almost 400,000 pesos. Based on SOCE reports submitted to the poll body, he is also the candidate who received the most contributions. Paul frontrunner Grace Polia Manzares received 123.61 million pesos in donations and spent 123.45 million, saving 160,000 pesos. The Bureau of Internal Revenue classifies unused campaign contributions as the candidate's income, and it is subject to tax. First-time lawmaker Nancy Binay goes back to school for a crash course on legislation. Ayu Makaraig reports. It's school season again, but this mommy isn't just sending her kids off. She's going back to school herself. Nancy Binay returns to her alma mater, the University of the Philippines, this time not just as an ordinary student. The senator-elect begins a five-day executive course on legislation along with her campaign turned Senate staff. After facing criticism about her inexperience, the self-styled forever personal assistant of her father, Vice President Jeju Marbinay, tries her hand at being a legislator. Uh, executive kasi nga my father is part of the executive branch. So, um, tapos second pa dun is na I follow the advice of Senator Miriam Santiago. Di ba sinabi niya na kaming mga neophyte, uh, mag-aral kami sa si NC Pat. Kaya nga today, I am here and uh, I am ready to um, learn kung ano yung mga ins and outs dyan sa Senate. 
The customized crash course covers the legislative mill, the budget process, and the use of pork barrel, all new to the tourism graduate. As uh, she starts her work in the Senate, if there are additional areas that she would want the intensive policy briefings, we can put together uh, short uh, policy briefings for her on areas that she would want to focus on. Joining the session is her chief of staff, former NHG Undersecretary Jay Layu. While Binay's team attends class, the group is also preparing her first bills, pushing for daycare centers and offices in rural areas, and improving safety standards for children. For fellow neophyte congresswoman-elect Sol Aragones and university officials, learning does not stop after the five days. Parami akong kinakausap para yung iba't ibang inputs na ito uh, talagang matutunan ko para naman pag nag-privileged speech ako, may sasabihin ako may laman. <laughs> Beyond the modules, Binay already gets exposed to Senate politics as lobbying for the leadership heats up. She will be one of six members of the minority backing the bid of resigned Senate President Juan Ponce Enrile against her godfather administration stalwart Senator Frank Drillon. Titignan talaga namin kung yung uh, pinopropose uh, talagang makakatulong sa ating mga kababayan. Uh, Una-una, nakikita niya naman ngayon na uh, yung economic growth natin hindi pa nagkakaroon ng trickle-down effect. After being in her father's shadow for 20 years, Binay says she is preparing hard to make her own mark when the 16th Congress opens in July. Ina, anak, kapatid. It's the line Nancy Bina used to introduce herself to voters and win a Senate seat. Now, she adds another role, student. But for this political neophyte, the bigger classroom is the Senate. Here, there are no grades, just six years, and the vote of 16 million Filipinos. She cannot afford to fail. Ayi Makraig, Rappler. Binay says she's also considering donating her 8 million peso savings from campaign contributions to a children's foundation. So, sana i-donate for sa isang foundation, children's foundation, or um, yung isip ko, kasi din sa PGH Children's Ward, baka pwede ako mag-contribute para ma-renovate yung children's ward. So another option din is baka isoli din namin dun sa mag-donate sa akin kasi nga may, may tax implication yun, di ba? So pinag-aaralan ko. Paul Watchdog Contra Daya calls on President Benigno Aquino to disclose the amount of public funds he spent to campaign for the administration's senatorial ticket. In a statement issued a few days after the deadline for reporting campaign expenses, Contra Daya convener Renato Reyes Jr. says Aquino, quote, presumably paid for his transportation, security, and detail, security detail, and other expenses in Team Pinoy sorties using public funds. He notes the president's attendance in campaign sorties, quote, not necessarily connected with the functions of his office. Reyes says, in the spirit of transparency, a proper accounting should be made. Responding to Contradaya's statement, Deputy Presidential Spokesperson Abigail Valtes says in a text message, The President's engagements are planned months in advance. The campaign worked its schedule around the President's official engagements. In February, activists accused Aquino of using government funds to campaign for administration bets. The palace denied the claim. After three days of searching in strong currents, authorities say the seven missing passengers of a ferry that sank off Masbate last week are feared dead. The MV Our Lady of Mount Carmel sank in calm weather Friday, about two kilometers from central Burias Island. Two female passengers died. Officials say 61 of the 70, 70 people aboard the vessel are rescued. Navy Spokesman Lieutenant Commander Gerald Fabic says divers have not yet located the ferry. The Regional Civil Defense Chief says authorities shift from rescue to retrieval operations because of lack of progress and signs of impending bad weather. Taiwan and the Philippines agree not to use armed force in fishing disputes as they continue talking about the killing of a Taiwanese fisherman by members of the Philippine Coast Guard. In a statement released Saturday, Taiwan's foreign ministry says the two sides reached the agreement during their first preparatory meeting on fishery cooperation in Manila Friday. It says the agreement aims to avoid a repeat of incidents like the killing of the Taiwanese fisherman after the Philippine Coast Guard members fired on his boat while in waters 
near Philippine Island, Taiwan, also claims as part of its economic zone. Philippine investigators say they recommended the filing of criminal charges against the Philippine Coast Guard members involved in the fatal shooting. This comes after the Philippines agreed to joint investigations into the incident following outrage in Taiwan over the killing. Our social media post of the day is a collage of photos of the fire in Sergeant Esguera, Quezon City, tweeted to Rappler by user at Santa Popoy. The fire started at 2.24 p.m., hitting a carpentry shop near TV stations in Quezon City. The damage caused by the fire is estimated 2.3 million pesos. Cause of the fire has yet to be determined. Following the revelation of U.S. surveillance program PRISM, tech companies Facebook, Apple, and Microsoft separately reveal information about data requests made by the U.S. government. Facebook on Friday says it received 9,000 to 10,000 user data requests from the U.S. government for the last six months of 2012. Facebook's general counsel says the requests varied, quote, from things like local sheriff trying to find a missing child, to a federal marshal tracking a fugitive, to a police department investigating an assault, to a national security official investigating a terrorist threat. The social networking site says about 18,000 to 19,000 accounts are affected by the requests. Microsoft also reveals U.S. government requests Friday, saying the company is, quote, permitted to include the total volume of national security orders. Microsoft's statement also covers the last six months of 2012. The company says it received, quote, between 6,000 and 7,000 criminal and national security warrants, subpoenas, and orders, affecting between 31,000 and 32,000 consumer accounts from U.S. government entities. Apple follows Facebook and Microsoft's footsteps Monday sharing partial data. Apple says it received between 4,000 to 5,000 requests for customer data relating to around 9,000 to 10,000 accounts or devices from U.S. law enforcement agencies between December 1, 2012 and May 31, 2013. The tech companies say they hope the move restores their users' faith in companies that keep their personal information. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number five, a Guardian exclusive report says the British government ordered the monitoring of computer activity and phone calls of foreign officials attending the 2009 G20 summit in London. The Guardian reports the systematic spying included British intelligence getting reports from American agency NSA in an attempt to eavesdrop on Russian leader Dmitry Medvedev. The evidence comes from top secret documents uncovered by NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden. The expose comes as Britain prepares to host another summit Monday for the G8 nations. It's likely to lead to tension among visiting delegates who will want the Prime Minister to explain. At number eight, North Korea proposes high-level talks with the U.S. on denuclearization just days after it abruptly canceled a rare meeting with the South because of disagreement over protocol. In a statement, North Korea's National Defense Commission says it's willing to have, quote, broad and in-depth discussions on issues like the building of, quote, a world without nuclear weapons being promoted by U.S. President Barack Obama. Analysts say Washington is unlikely to accept the proposal without any concrete action from Pyongyang to move towards denuclearization. And at number 10, Google reveals top secret plans to beam internet to two-thirds of the global population using balloons sent to the edge of space. On Saturday, scientists release up to 30 helium-filled test balloons carrying antenna linked to ground-based stations over Christchurch in New Zealand. Project Loon hopes yeah, to provide internet right. to remote parts Balloons. of the world, allowing more than 4 billion people with no access to get online. It could also be used to help after natural disasters when existing communication infrastructure is affected. The project is still in the early stages, but Google says its ultimate goal is to have a ring of balloons circling the earth and providing internet access worldwide. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. The San Antonio Spurs are just one win away from taking home the 2013 NBA title after beating Miami Heat in Game 5 of the Finals, 114-104. Spurs star Manu Ginobili, who has been struggling the entire season, churns out his best performance, tallying 24 points and 10 assists. Another Spurs standout is Danny Green. He sets a new NBA record for most three-pointers in a final series. He has so far made 25 three-point field goals. The series now shifts back to Miami where the Heat will have to win two straight games to defend their NBA title. 
the satire that shaped the opinion and humor of an entire generation since the late 1980s moves to an online medium. Starting June 17th, Monday, Paul Medina Jr.'s comic strip, Pugad Baboy, will now appear on Rappler as hashtag Pugad Baboy, the webcomic. The popular comic strip is revived after being suspended from the Philippine Daily Inquirer for a controversial June 4th commentary on gay women. Even before Medina resigned from the Inquirer, he was already reflecting about the possibilities of new media. Eh, lumabas yung mga e-books, tapos yung mga, uh, uh, mga iPhone nga, na pwede ka umupo magkape ng matagal. Pwede mo rin, at your own pace, pwede mo rin i-flip yung pages nang hindi nagpiflip mag-isa. Kaya, yan, yan talaga medium ng, ano, eh, ng, ng future. Eh. Kaya, sabi ko parang naging opportunity pa to para uh, makalipat ako sa mas, mas modern na, na, na medium. From Mondays to Saturdays, hashtag Pugad Baboy will pop up on the Rappler site at 5 a.m. Click on the first frame which will appear on Rappler's homepage and you'll be led to a page where you'll get to read the full comic strip and choose which last frame or punchline you like best. It's you collaborating with Paul Medina Jr. on hashtag Pugad Baboy every day, six days a week. Every story on Rappler has its own mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator. That's the middle of the front page. It crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have gotten the most votes on their mood meters. These are the stories that have affected our readers the most. Take a look today. It is a green day and the last story Actually, it's funny. The green is all the technology stories. Tech Wrap, iOS 7, 60% happy. You have the story that's gotten the most number of votes in the last 24 hours. Click hashtag Pugad Baboy is on Rappler. You've got 95% happy and 1% angry. And today's first webcomic, hashtag Pugad Baboy, your balls are missing. You have 24% amused and a whopping 71% happy. The mood of the day. Today, most people are happy. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Monday, June 17th, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.